you. Hi, uh, my name is Dr. Gabor Lokash, and I have been on the line. And we are calling in relation to a reservation with uh, locator is. Okay, can you confirm the IATA on the file, please? Uh, I don't have that one on file. Did you book through a consolidator? Yes, I did. Okay, sorry, uh, who am I speaking to? I'm the travel agent. And you're also speaking to Dr. Gabor Lukacs, I'm an air passenger rights advocate. Hey, sorry, can I have the IATA one more time just so I can note it on the file and grant full access? Yes. Okay, so how can I help? Um, I think I'm going to take over from this point. Uh, my understanding is that there has been a cancellation uh, in relation to this um, flight, and uh, so far WestJet has not been uh, complying with its obligations under the tariff to rebook passengers on flights of other airlines in this situation. So that's the reason that we are calling, um, because um, it's quite clear in uh, WestJet's international tariff what WestJet has to do in this situation, and we would like to see compliance. So I'm just looking at the schedule change. Just bear with me a moment here. So April 25th. In cancellation. Uh, okay, Cancun, Ottawa, Ottawa, Halifax. Oh, I see. So, oh, okay. So it was a connection in Ottawa, a same-day connection, but now it's a connection in Toronto, but it's a force overnight in Toronto. And that's not acceptable. So um, that's, that's absolutely not acceptable. And, uh, and, and uh, we invoke WESIS International Tariff in this regard and we request that WESIS comply with its obligation and reboot the passengers and flights of other airlines as necessary in this situation, including Air Canada. That's what the law is now. Uh, we only ever reprotect on Air Canada if it's domestic. Well, so Madam, yeah. Madam, I don't care what your policy has been so far. This is in your tariff. Read your own tariff, please. It's right in your own international tariff. You have to comply with that. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I'm, who, are, I'm, who am I speaking to? You're speaking to Gabor Lukacs. I am a Canadian air passenger rights advocate, and I'm the one who ensured that those provisions would get into wedges tariffs. There is a ruling of the Canadian Transportation Agency in place. Uh, I need to look this up. I'm sorry. This is the first time I'm hearing of this. I, I, so I'm happy to help you. Why don't, why don't I take you through it? So why don't you go to WestJet International um, Tariff and then look at Rule 75. And we are talking about rule, sub rule C, sub 2, sub C. There's also a notice to the industry from 2013, July 3rd, by the Canadian Transportation Agency on the same issue. And so you're seeing this on WestJet.com? WestJet.com, that's correct. I went to WestJet International and Transporter Tariff. Tariff rule number 75, sub rule C. Sub, sub rule. I'm sorry, where, where on WestJet.com are you, view, you viewing this, please? I'm looking at the WestJet legal information and international and transborder tariff.
And so you're seeing it in section 75, and what letter was it? Letter C, below that, number 2, and then below that, C. Reroute the passenger to the destination, name the ticket or applicable portion thereof on another carrier's transportation services, including interline or where possible necessary non-interline carriers. That's what their obligation is. That's coming from a ruling released by 2012 by the Canadian Transportation Agency, Lukács versus WestJet. Lukács was me. There, if you want further information, if you go to the Canadian Transportation Agency's website, they also have a notice to the industry released on July 3, 2013, clarifying the obligations of airlines to rebook passengers or flights of other airlines in the event of cancellation which is in their control, like here. This is a cancellation for commercial reasons. This is not weather, this is not mechanical reasons. You just cancel it because that's what your commercial interest is, which is fine, no problem, but you have obligations to rebook the passengers on flights of other airlines. You cannot expect the passengers to stay overnight in that circumstance when there are actually other flights available. I need to talk to my support about this because, from my understanding, we've only ever reprotected guests on Air Canada when it's an uncontrollable IROP and it's domestic only. So I need to contact my support on this. I need to call them. I'm sorry it's a bit of a wait. It's about a 12-minute wait. They're busy, but I need to talk to them because um, we are willing to reprotect on WestJet code share or WestJet operated flights, but we are not code share with Air Canada, so I need to double check that before I can promise anything. And, 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 and Madam, Madam, first, thank you for acknowledging that WestJet has been breaking the, its own tariff for the past four years. It's very valuable, and certainly we'll take that up further. Um, but you have to understand that many things that are done in particular ways aren't necessarily legal. What I read to you is right in your tariff. Those are the binding, this is a binding contract with the passenger. So. And I understand that, but um, again, I apologize. I need to contact my support on this. I personally don't have the ability to book Air Canada. I don't have the access. Okay, so, so so why don't you just have a three-way call with us and have you know a supervisor or someone from your support speak to us because we don't want to play broken phone. This is the law. This is what Reddit has to do, and um, we would like to speak with someone who is actually in a position of full authority, whom we can refer to the particular decisions of, if necessary. Otherwise, it would be you and them kind of playing a broken phone. It would be more efficient if we just spoke to them directly. Um, I will be contacting them. I need to confer with them first. And sorry, I, I for, please forgive me. So you're with the Canadian Air Passenger. What agency are you with? I am an Air Passenger Rights Advocate. Okay. Uh, and, and, and I have... And I have secured a ruling in 2012 from the Canadian Transportation Agency which deals with this situation. When a flight is cancelled for reasons within the control of WestJet, like this, and uh, in that situation, WestJet has to protect passengers of flights of other airlines, even if it has no interline agreement with them, like no coach or no, that, that's, that's not relevant, those flights are available, and uh, and the WestJet has to protect those passengers on those flights. That's what the ruling is. And there is a, uh, as I said, there is a notice to the industry from 2013, July 3rd, uh, summarizing in plain English the rules applicable in such situations. It's, you know, there were a total of five rulings published in 2012. They're numbered from 248, 249, 250, 251, 252, dash C, dash A, 2012. They're all rulings by the Canadian Transportation Agency. They were all rulings that I was the complainant. Okay, and I get that. And I, so um, for, in order for us to move forward, I do need to pop you on hold, and I do need to contact my support before we can go any further, okay? Sure, sure, please do. Okay, thank you so much. No problem. Hi there, Gabor. Are you guys still there? Yes, we are. Hi. Thank you so much for your patience. I'm so sorry for that. Such a long wait time. There's major cancellations in Toronto, so that's why uh, the queue just kept spiking and spiking and spiking. So I do really apologize about that, and thank mm. you so much for your patience. So um, I talked to my support desk, um, and so they did confirm with Air Canada, um, we our airline agreement with them, we do not re-protect on their airline when there is a schedule change. 
So we will look at every other option on WestJet or CodeShare that we operate with, so CodeShare with American Airlines or uh, Delta. But at this point in time, Air Canada, we only ever reprotect on Air Canada um, if it's a domestic flight and if it is weather. So if there's no other flights, we do have the ability to reprotect on Air Canada. But for schedule changes, um, this is a scenario where we do not have an agreement with Air Canada to reprotect on. Madam, it doesn't matter whether you have an agreement or not. That's what your tariff says, and you have to then buy them a ticket. It's very simple. You, there is a contract, and it's actually legally binding. That's under Canada Transportation Act and their transportation regulations. It's Section 7, uh, Rule 75 of your tariff. You have to comply with it. It's not like whether you like it or not. This is the rule. This is the law in Canada now, whether you like it or not. Okay, so um, at this point in time, I cannot reprotect on Air Canada. Do you want me to transfer you to our guest support team to escalate this? To, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. So, um, still there? Yes, I am. Hi there. Okay, so I'm just going to note the file. And so do I have, of course, your permission to um, note the file and also have yourself and Gabor to have full access to the reservation? Yes. Okay, beautiful. So um, if you don't mind, I will have to pop you guys on another small hold. I'm going to call my guest support, and then they might just take over the call and assist and move forward, okay? Sure. Um, so sit for another couple moments, and then I'll, uh, I'll talk to my guest support. No problem. Okay, thanks. Hi, thanks so much for holding in your patience. It's Melissa. It's um, uh, Hi, Gabor. <laughs> Um, so uh, my support is just on hold on the other line. So we've done a little bit more digging. Um, mm -hmm. I appreciate the search in the Rule 75 schedule irregularities, but with a schedule change, it's not something that's in our control. Schedule, schedule changes are typically done because the airport will not accept our aircraft arriving at that specific time. So usually the airport can't uh, accept us due to air traffic control. There could be construction at the airport. So a schedule change is something out of our control. No, madam, it's, it's not. I, I, please don't even continue that nonsense. That, that in, in uh, Reggie cancels flights typically because it's not economic to fly the flights because there are no enough passengers flying on it. That's, that's the reason why this flight is canceled, and that's why the reason why many other WestJet flights cancel. So until such time as you can provide proof that this specific flight was canceled for such a reason, this is a cancellation well within WestJet's control. This is, you know, we, we, are, we are talking here about things happening months in advance, and this, those flights are being canceled due to economic reasons, as the same way that WestJet has been canceling many other flights that I'm aware of. So do you have any proof about the reason for the cancellation of this specific flight? If not, then it is in the control. Let me go back to my support. Hi, sorry about that. Thanks again for your patience. I'm hoping yes? this is the last one hold. I'm sorry about that. It's a bit of telephone tag here. Mm -hmm. So uh, spoke, again, spoke again with my support. Um, so we can't provide that information. We're a publicly, publicly traded company, um, so it is operational, not within our control with these schedule changes. So at this point, our only options, we can reprotect on another WestJet flight. We could slide the date one day later. We can offer hotel accommodation uh, due to the overnight. Um, we can also offer a full refund if they do not accept the flights. Um, and I can provide the waiver codes to so then she can then process the refunds on her end, full refund, no cancellation fees. Uh, these are the options that we can offer at this point. Madam, these are not the options that you have to offer. You are trying to pretend, pretend that you are above the law, and that's not acceptable. You told us you would connect us with, your, uh, with the guest support. With, um, or with, uh, with services, and you didn't even transfer us. So uh, instead of wasting each other's time, why don't you connect us to them, and then we move forward? Okay, for sure. I, I do have her on the hold on the other line. I'll pop you on one more hold, and I'll transfer her over and just advise that um, I'll be transferring you over to her, okay? Sure, sure. Okay, thank you. Rizal speaking. How can I help you today, Gabor? Hi, it's Dr. Gabor. Look, I'm speaking. So, um, what is your name and what is your role, please? Rosalyn from Guest Support. 
Okay, Rosanna, so here's where the situation is. Well, they chose to cancel the flight that previously sold. It was a commercial choice. And we are therefore requesting that Wesley comply with the obligation that were imposed on it in 2012 by the Canadian Transportation Agency with respect to flight cancellations, which is to rebook passengers on flights of other airlines. That is the obligation that WestJet has agreed to and that was, that was imposed by the Canadian Transportation Agency. So we simply expect you to comply. We do comply. However, we can we protect them on an air um, on an air carrier that we have agreements with only. So we can no. protect them with the Madam, that, that's not what the ruling said. The Canadian Transportation Agency ruled, and it's right in your tariff, that you cannot restrict reprotection to carriers with whom we have interline agreement. That's what the ruling was. You need to read the ruling again. It's not lawful. Yeah, I, yeah, I am aware of that. And if you look at within our tariff agreement is that, you know, with schedule change, uh, we will reprotect, we have an option for the guests in well, terms of us. Can, so you they tell, can, can you tell me which tariff you are referring to? Just okay, so if you look at... I have Rule 75C right in front of me, and I have also the ruling of the Canadian Transportation Agency in my mind. The Canadian Transportation Agency uh, ruled still, that you cannot restrict yourself to, to airlines with whom you have interline agreement. That's not lawful. That's a ruling from 2012. I can give you a number of the rulings so that you will be able to review it yourself. It's an it's a order. So if you, yes, if you look at that, C, number three. It'll go not within carrier's control because with this kind of schedule change, it's not within our control. Of course, so if you look at policy. that, it does say that we will route them on a different carrier within our – like that we if, have if, a commercial if, agreement if with. If you're reading three, this refers to force majeure. There's no force majeure here. There's no storm. There's no anything happening. This is – I mean, read, read itself. Read, read out loud sub three. This, something which should not be in the carrier's control is a force majeure. Do you have force majeure here? Is there a volcano eruption? Is there a snowstorm? No, none of that. There are different um, lists of not within our control. So that, again, with this kind of schedule change, uh, typically it's the airport telling us to change it. So it, they, like that is not within our control. Well, so it does go on to subject well, three. Well, uh, do you have proof that it was the airport which told you that you can no longer fly that day there. Can you, can you, basically, do you have proof of that? Because I don't think that you do. This we do have that proof. However, we cannot provide that to you because we are a publicly traded company. And, and, and the fact that you're a publicly traded company doesn't, how, doesn't preclude you from actually imposing more obligations on you to, to, be, to be open. But just to be clear, a control for schedule irregularity is defined as a cancellation due to operational requirements. That I'm reading right at the definitions. If you bother to read your own tariff, rule one, controllable schedule regulator is defined there as cancellation due to operational requirements. That is controllable. It's right in your tariff. Yes, but this is not controllable. This is, this is not within our control. Madam, again, you are... So the options for the guests, no, in, madam. in overall, the options madam, for the guests please, is... Stop. Please don't waste my time on this kind of nonsense, okay? Let's get back to rule, to rule one. It defines what control or schedule irregularities are. They can, this is a cancellation due to what you claim operational requirement. That is control board. That's how your own tariff defines it. Just please go to rule one and read your own tariff. You are not reading your own tariff. Again, and, so we do have a legal department that deals specifically with this. And they do their due diligence in ensuring that we follow our tariff agreements. Okay, that I'll agree with you that that is above my pay grade, and I trust that they do in completely follow our tariff agreement. And in this case, it is not within our control. So the options for the guests is they can we can definitely protect them on a carrier that we have an agreement with, or they can cancel for a refund. That is their option. Madam, you have so far provided us no proof that this is something outside of your control. This is, uh, uh, it, this is a complete nonsense. Are, are, can you tell us which airport allegedly um, um, said, you know, decided that, that, is, that, is, that you cannot fly? 
again, we are not, um, we can't provide you that information. Again, we are a publicly traded company. And, and, and you can keep repeating it as a, as a, as a parrot. But actually, what, what does public trade mean? Can you explain it? Do you know what it means, or you're just repeating something you were told? Sorry? Do you know what a publicly traded company means? Do you know what you're saying, actually, or you're just repeating a script? No, we don't have a script here. Well, my question to you is, do you know what a publicly traded company is, and how does it, is it come to the whole story with any re relevance to what we are discussing now? So, In terms of what, giving you information, like legally, or? Well, I, I, you're claiming that you're a publicly traded company that's somehow relevant to, to, what, to, to this issue. How is it relevant? Do you know, if, do you even in understand, terms of, do you know what you are saying? Do you actually talking, know what you're talking about? In terms of that, we are required, not, like we're not required to publicly inform every operational that we have. Well, but you you are claiming like here. In terms of the information that you're requesting, we are not, like we can't provide you with that information. Well, you are canceling, but you are canceling the passenger's mean, flight. You know. The passenger has a right to know what the reason for the cancellation. That's also in in the tariff. That's one of the yeah, rights within of the our tariff, Within our tariff, if it is within our control or if it's not within our control, we have, like, we will own up to that. Well, it's the But in terms of providing you proof, we cannot provide you with that proof. Uh, and, Madam, under Rule 15 sub B, you're also supposed to state the reason for the schedule change. So I am asking you, what to state on the record what it was the exact reason for the for the cancellation of this specific flight. You are required to do so by Rule 15b. That's right in your tariff. Please read Rule 15b. So in this case, all I can tell you is that it is a schedule change. Um, no, that, that is not acceptable. You need to tell me what is the reason for it. That's what your tariff says. Please read your own tariff. You have to comply. That's the law. You don't, you know, you don't like what your, your, the law is, but that's what the law is. Sorry. That's what no, is in your we, tariff. We do have a legal department that deals specifically with this, and I, I apologize if you for, you're frustrated that we're not able to reprotect your guests on an Air Canada flight, but we are within our tariff to do a schedule change. And, again, our option is we will change them to an airline that we have an agreement with, or they can refund the ticket. Madam, can I so that is only two I, I, options. I think this is a useful discussion, but uh, so I would like to speak to your superior. Yeah. Um, so I'll just get your contact phone number. Okay. Okay, with your phone number. And your name is Gabor, correct? Dr. Gabor Lukacs is my name. Sorry, Dr. Gabor, your last name? Lukacs is L-U-K-A-C-S. A-C-S? That's correct. Okay, so what I'll do is um, I'll forward this off to our seniors. Um, their turnaround time for contact is within 48 hours. All right, that will be most welcome, and I very much look forward to speaking to someone. Um, and uh, so do you not have anybody on duty to whom we can speak right now? Uh, we do. However, we do have a list of, like, going in as a request, so it gets answered to the order of sequence. So that's why we give that within 48 hours. Um, someone will call you back. All right, and if they don't, then what is the next step? I can assure you they will definitely contact you back. Or if I miss their call, I mean, things, things that can happen? Um, they typically leave a callback number um, or a message telling you to call us back. Okay, I'm also going to leave you an email address then where they can reach me, okay? Of course, go ahead. It's like my last name, Lima Uniform Kilo Alpha Charlie Sierra at... 
airpassengerrights.ca. So a air passenger. Air floor? passenger rights own one word dot ca. Okay, so that's a i r p a s s e n g e r r i g h t s. That's correct. Dot ca. Dot ca. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yes. I'll provide them with that information as well. Thank you very much. Have a good afternoon. You're welcome. Bye. You too. Thanks. Bye.